the topic. How does it come about? Arabs in Israel, conflict or conciliation. That topic, that subject, that construction of the topic. How does it come about? Well, it happened to me one morning at the height of the Israeli blitzkrieg. You know that lightning war Hitler had blitzkrieg into Poland, into France, into Russia. That blitzkrieg, you know, Hitler. That blitzkrieg that the Jews applied in, in, in the Lebanon in 1982. At the height of that blitzkrieg, I get a phone call from the University of Natal. A professor... Professor Mason, head of the Department of Law. He phones me and says, look, the Jewish students at the university, they are inviting the Israeli Council General in South Africa to come and speak to the students about Palestine. And would like to know from you whether you would also be prepared to participate. They like to have, this is, it's not fair, only the Jew has his say. We want also a point of view of the Muslims. Would you be prepared to come? I said, yes. So, how do you suggest that we advertise this topic? So, it occurred to me, I said, look, pros, the pros and cons of Israel. Oh, this is beautiful. The pros and cons, the for and against. He is for, I am against, we discuss this. And let the students go home and think for themselves. This is beautiful, beautiful. Right. A few days later, he comes back to me. He says, no, the Jews, they say they don't like the topic. They don't like your topic. Simple, neutral, pros and cons of Israel. He said, they say you must, Arabs and Israel, conflict or conciliation. I said, agreed. Now, there's a catch. There's a catch in the title. The Jews are very ingenious. They have always been. I don't know whether you know. Allah Ta'ala describes the Jews in the Quran, the progenitor of the Jews, Hazrat Isaq alayhi salam. But before that, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, the birth of Ismail alayhi salam. Allah Ta'ala gives the good news to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam and he says, I promise you a son, he will be Ghulam and Halima. Ismail will be Ghulam and Halima, humble, submissive fellow. And the second time the news is given to him, 13 years later, about the birth of Ishaq alayhi salam, he says, Ghulam and Alima, a knowledgeable fellow, a highly intellectual fellow. You think Allah is just trying to rhyme it? Ghulam and Halima, Ghulam and Alima. He's trying to just rhyme it for you? No, no, no. There's something in it. When he says Ghulam and Halima, look at the Arabs. <laughs> Despite all their barbarism. You know, of the pre-Islamic Arabs. Hmm? But they had this quality. When you come right with him, you accept him, he will give his life for you. He's humble, submissive. The true salt of the earth. And the Jew, and the Jew, you see, Ghulam and Alima, highly intellectual. He's always catching us out. He's always catching us out. You enter into a treaty, that resolution was a 242 or whatever it is, United Nations, man, he's got you. Anything else, he's got you. There, intellect. Intellect, highly intellectual, even today. They are the leaders. Allah has made them so. So, highly intellectual people. They were so also in the time of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Again and again, they came to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, in the Bible, in their Bible, it says. They come to him, they said, Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi, Maulana, Sheikh, Imam, Maulana, Rabbi, Master. We caught this woman in the act, act of adultery. What must we do to her? They caught the woman in the act. Where is the man? You caught the woman in the act. What was she doing? Where was the man? No, no, the man is not there. Is this woman. They want to catch him out. If he says, according to the law of Moses, in the book of Leviticus, in the Bible, it says, the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death. That's the verdict of the man of God. Stone the woman to death. And the man, but he's not there. And the man must be stoned to death. And adultery was not a capital crime in the Roman Empire. 
So they would stone this woman to death. And if they were caught out, they said, why did you kill this woman? Instead of our Messiah says so. Now he's in conflict with the government. If he says, let her go, then he says, look, this is not a man of God. Because the Torah says that the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death. Either way he loses. Heads I win, tails you lose. Masters of geniuses. But Jesus is also a Jew. He's also a Jew. Hmm? Beautifully, he solves the problem. Beautifully. He says, let him who is free from, free from sin cast the first stone. And he turned the tables on them. But now, this is the genius of the Jew. Heads I win, tails you lose. Either way. I can give you dozens of examples from the Bible. How they confronted Jesus again and again. Master, what must we do? Master, they know the answer. Master, must we pay tribute to Caesar or not? Must we pay taxes or not? If he says pay taxes, then they say, look, this is not the Messiah we're waiting for. He's a stooge of the government. You see? <laughs> he can't be the Messiah. Rejected. If he says don't pay, they won't pay. If they're caught, he says, why didn't you pay your taxes? He says, well, Messiah says so. He's in conflict with the government. Either way, he loses. Heads I win, tails you lose. Same. Conflict or conciliation. What do you want? You Muslims, what do you want? Come on, come on, come on. What will you have? Conflict? To the audiences, you see, these are troublemakers. The terrorists. You know? <laughs> the fundamental. You see, they want trouble. They want to fight. We want peace. They want war. In the eyes of the audience, never mind how right you are, you are already lost. It says, conciliation? They say, then why are you throwing stones? Huh? Why are you throwing stones? Either way you're caught. Heads I win, tails you lose. But I said, okay. We want an opportunity to have our message delivered. So Alhamdulillah, we accepted the title, Arabs and Israel, Conflict of Conciliation. And with Dr. Lottam of the Israeli Embassy in South Africa, we had a debate. It was a great debate. But some <coughs> the topic, Arabs and Israel, Conflict of Conciliation. Now I want to read to you a statement made by a Jew, an Austrian-German Jew, Leopold Weiss. He was a reporter for the German newspaper Frankfurter Zeitung. In 1922, he goes to Jerusalem. And the Jews had a gathering, private gathering. Dr. Weizmann was the head. Ben Gurion was there. And this other Ben Begin and all. They were all young men. They were all there. And they were planning on the map. A map of Palestine was laid out. And Weizmann was saying that now we'll take this like that. And this is how we'll take this place. And so after listening to all this, this young Jew, he was 22 years old, a reporter for this newspaper. He said, but what about the Arabs? So Weizmann said, so what about the Arabs? He says, you know, there are a majority in the country. So Weizmann says, they won't be majority for long. They won't be majority for long. So he says, now, it struck him that these people, you know, they want to share out a people's land. They are there, they are living there, and they rob them of their land. So he said, he's saying, in his later on, he writes a book and he says, how was it possible? I wondered, how was it possible for people endowed with so much creative intelligence as the Jews? He's a Jew himself. There is no doubt about it. So much creative intelligence as the Jews to think of the Zionist Arab conflict in Jewish terms alone. Did they not realize that the problem of the Jews in Palestine could, in the long run, be solved only through friendly cooperation with the Arabs? Didn't they realize that? Were they so hopelessly blind to the painful future which their policy must bring to the struggles, bitterness, and the hatred to which the Jewish island, even if temporarily successful, would forever remain exposed in the midst of a hostile Arab Sea? And how strange, I thought, this young Jew says, that a nation which had suffered so many wrongs in the course of its long and sorrowful diaspora dispersion, was now in single-minded pursuit of its own goal, ready to inflict a grievous wrong on another nation, and a nation too that was innocent of all that past Jewish suffering. Such a phenomena, I knew, was not unknown to history. 
but it made me nonetheless very sad to see it enacted before my eyes. How does it happen that such a highly intellectual community, wallah they are, that they can think so selfishly and so brutally what Hitler had done to them, now they are prepared to do to another nation and who were not responsible for their sufferings. How is it possible? It is possible. People can be brainwashed. You can be brainwashed. We all can be brainwashed. I know the Americans don't like the term brainwashing, brainwashed. They say programmed. We all can be programmed. See? I was corrected in my first trip to America. I was telling the, the, the audience in Berkeley University, said, you have been brainwashed. So one young man stood up, says, no, not brainwashed, programmed. I said, sorry, from now on, you programmed, programmed. Now people can be programmed. 